It lies just 90 miles from Florida. A tropical time capsule of sorts, a land of 11 million people, where the clock seems to have stopped 50 years ago. With Fidel Castro here, our former clerks, technicians, students, town people, and the simple campesinos. The story of modern Cuba is largely the story of this man, Fidel Castro. This is only the beginning. The last battle will be fought in the capital. You can be sure. A new leader is on the scene, Fidel Castro. A month after taking power in 1959, Castro told CBS's Edward R. Murrow exactly what Americans wanted to hear. Tell me, Fidel Castro, are you concerned at all about the communist influence in Cuba? Oh, I am not worried because really there is no threat about communism here in Cuba. Of course, the threat of communism is exactly what's defined the U.S.-Cuban relationship for the last five decades. Castro nationalized industries, seized American property, and ruthlessly persecuted his opponents here. The U.S. responded with sanctions and a trade embargo, all of which remain in place even after the events of this past week. Socialismo. Fact is, tensions between the United States and Cuba predate the rule of Fidel Castro. The U.S. entered the Spanish-American War in 1898, supporting Cuban independence from Spain. Future President Theodore Roosevelt made his name here with his Rough Riders. But in the years that followed, the Cuban people would come to regard the U.S. as yet another exploiting power. Castro fueled anti-Americanism, and the failed 1961 coup attempt by U.S.-backed Cuban exiles at the Bay of Pigs cemented an alliance between Cuba and the Soviet Union. This is the CBS News Extra. The next year, the Soviets deployed ballistic missiles to Cuba. It shall be the policy of this nation to regard any nuclear missile launched from Cuba against any nation in the Western Hemisphere as an attack by the Soviet Union on the United States. President John F. Kennedy went eye to eye with his adversaries. It was a game of nuclear brinksmanship, and the missiles were removed. But the Soviets continued to infuse billions of dollars a year into the Cuban economy, keeping it alive despite U.S. sanctions. Which brings us to 1980 and the Mariel boat lift, a huge repudiation of Castro's claim that Cubans were happy and content. Told they were free to go, 125,000 did just that. If life here in Cuba was bad then, it got worse when the Soviet Union collapsed in 1991. In response, Fidel Castro legalized the U.S. dollar. Today, the flow of cash and goods from the United States is estimated at $5 billion a year. Castro also invited foreign investment. Everybody, it seemed, except the United States, moved in to capitalize on the more than two million international tourists who visit each year. Fidel Castro transferred Cuba's presidency to his younger brother, Raul, six years ago. Raul Castro recently announced his intention to step down in 2018. But now, at the dawn of a new era in U.S.-Cuban relations, all bets are off on what comes next. Once again, the clock is ticking here in Havana.